welcome back. As the death toll from the coronavirus keeps rising, it's crippling not only China's economy, but is having a knock-on effect globally. Formula One's race in Shanghai has been postponed. This year's Mobile World in Barcelona has been cancelled. All prices have tumbled 20% low below their January peaks, raising the prospect that OPEC could cut production again. Nigeria, as an oil-producing country, is also affected, and our stock market is affected as well. Our guest today, Rotas Odiri, is an analyst, broadcaster, and TV anchor who graduated from the University of Houston with a degree in economics and a minor in business administration. He has spent 17 years in financial services, working in the United States of America and Nigeria. Remember, you can join the conversation, tweet us at Plus TV Africa or at Show Africa one with the, way, with the hashtag Waze or SMS 081-803-846-63. Thanks for joining us, Rotas, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. You know, I, I was saying to you earlier that I've heard you on, on radio, and it's yes. finally good to put a face to the voice. Same here, same here. Thanks <laughs> to meet you guys as well. Thanks to meet you guys Absolutely. As well. And the last time I met you, you were talking about the three wise men ah, yes. in another fora. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, materials for a certain exam. Yes, indeed. I yes, got indeed. you. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay. Okay, so we'll jump right into it. I know we're talking about the impact of coronavirus on the economy and the global market. So. <laughs> yes. I'll start with you know, financial markets. Mm -hmm. We know that the financial markets are sensitive to information, and this has clearly been the case for the global markets. Um, in your opinion, is this a short-term effect, or and it'll soon settle, or is the, yes, is the worst yet to come? Well, the encouraging news that we've gotten recently is that uh, China reported 35 new cases, which is the least amount that they've reported in the last three days. Okay. So if you look at the bell curve with regards to the number of new cases that have been um, recorded, okay. they seem to be going on a downward trend. Mm -hmm. What's alarming financial markets right now is that there are new cases popping up in other countries, South okay. Korea, Iran, right. Italy, yeah. So that's they are now coming up with their own new cases, right. and that's what seems to be causing financial markets um, to oh, yeah. be uh, nervous. But the epicenter of this has been in China, right. and if it's on a downward curve, that suggests, with what I understand, with what's been studied, using uh, the SARS epidemic in uh, yes. back in two thousand and. Uh, Three, I believe. Yes. Um, it, they hope to have everything contained by the end of March. It's just an estimate, Amen. <laughs> meaning that it might, you know, you who knows? We'll have to see how it goes. I know, right? Okay. So, okay. hopefully, so there's, hope yet uh, there's some the hope. Fantastic. Yeah, but so. China seems to have had a hit, like back to back. So, 2019 trade wars that you know reduced the pace of economic growth to a 30-year low, right. essentially, with millions of job losses recorded. Mm -hmm. And the country is essentially you know, grinding to a halt with this coronavirus thing. Right. So how should the rest of the world begin to prepare for this? Or you know, are they going to be able to mitigate the far-reaching effects of a slowdown yeah. in the world's second largest mm, economy? It's tough. Um, back in 2003, when the SARS epidemic happened, China was only contributing about 4% to global GDP. That number now is 20%. Um, it's affecting global supply chains across the world. The Wuhan, where this actually happened, mm -hmm. yeah. has a population of about almost 60 million people. That's combined, higher than Lagos wow. and Kano put together. So you get twice. Right, so you got, you got um, it's the automotive, it's a big automotive hub, mm -hmm. uh, it's a big technology hub. Foxconn yes. is part of Apple, Apple they produce yes, a lot of I things to them. So yeah. the ripple effects are being felt around the world, around the world. Uh, tourism has been russia for example 30 percent of russia's tourists come from china mm -hmm. and they spend a lot of money on luxury goods yeah. right so you think about that yeah you, you think about um nigeria in fact is going to be affected with uh, shipping cargoes slowing down possibly in the second quarter mm -hmm. because you know a number of china is the manufacturing hub of the world yes. largest um, uh, um, oil uh, consumer and so on and so forth so as far as countries possibly unwinding, it's a hard thing to do because they're all integrated. Yes, Here's exactly. an example, um, Fiat Chrysler, which is the eighth largest car manufacturer in the world, they just announced that one of their plants in Europe, in yes. Serbia, could possibly be shutting down because wow. they're missing inputs from, from China. China. So oh, it's everywhere, wow. automotive. China is one of the largest medical producer, medical supply producers uh, in the world. So That's pharmaceutical correct. countries, pharmaceutical companies, companies. in Europe, Absolutely. it's everywhere. So wow. um, you just have to write it out. To answer your question, for other countries, they have to write it out because it is such a large economy 
and such a large consumer uh, of so many um, items around the world right. that depend on them. Yeah, they, they depend Absolutely. on them. You know, so. Wow. So, what are the major challenges of um, business leaders? What are the p challenges mm. um, business leaders are expected to face mm. in the long term or short term? Well, it's also so the short term pain. If you look at a number of corporations around the world, this is coming at the worst time. Yes. Um, corporations in the in 2019, where they cut back on capital expenditure because of what was happening with Brexit mm -hmm. and, okay. and Europe and the UK. Yeah. Yeah. So they were like, let's slow things down and then see what happens in 2020. Mm -hmm. Brexit has happened. There's an 11 month transition period now yes. where the UK is supposed to be negotiating this. And this <laughs> happens at the worst time, which cuts down on their expenditures further. Exactly. If businesses pull back and cut down on expenditures, that affects employment, that mm -hmm. affects spending. Yeah, so for business leaders, I mean, as of right now, you just have to essentially ride out the storm and see if you can switch uh, your, as far as your supply chain cycles are concerned, possibly switch to another country, but then that's easier really? said than They're done. done. Yeah. You know, a capital incentive. Yeah, and so, so intensive. It, it's tough. Absolutely. British Airways, mm -hmm. Apple, so from tech, aviation, every major business company that has something to do with China has announced that they are quarter one profits are constantly going to be lower. They've given really earnings right. estimates that are lower. So <laughs> if you're in that chain, you're you're just hoping that a cure is found soon or at least it's a virus. It's like this is like the common cold, right? right? Yes. So you have to ride it out and hopefully it's it not like the out. common cold though. Well I mean in, in a sense so so what the the, the um it's essentially the, the coronavirus mm -hmm. is Pretty much in the same family yes. as yes, your so common cold, but this is a new yes. strain. Yes. Exactly. So there's no cure; you just have to ride it out ride like it a out. cold, right? Exactly. Um, the question is, how long do we have to how ride long? it out for? But, but you know, it, it, another thing, though, just you know, to kind of calm people down. Yes. If you're 50 years and under, you have a one percent chance of dying from this thing. I mean, most of the people who passed yeah, away are 60 up yeah, and are but, older folks. So, but anyway, as far as business leaders and what they can do, they simply have, they've given for guidance for their earnings estimates to let mm -hmm. investors know that their profits are going to be lower for the first quarter, second quarter. So, mm -hmm. hopefully third quarter is when you see things hopefully turn around. They have so, to how do you up. think this would change the working life globally? Japan, for instance, has this heavy work culture where everybody has to show up at work. Mm -hmm. Right. So there was an article in Bloomberg where they said that if Japan wants to turn things around and has to mitigate the effects of the coronavirus, mm -hmm. they have to let their workers work from home. Right? Which isn't so, far fetched. Right. So yeah. you, you mm -hmm. want to let your folks, workers work from home depending on the uh, area of work because exactly. media, you guys can't work from home, <laughs> you guys have to be here. Exactly. So depending on what area of the, what sector you're working in, if they can allow folks to work from home, they can still be possibly be productive from home mm -hmm. because that reduces the chance of this spreading uh, to right. others. So that's possibly one thing. So technology plays about. a huge role in the next phase of the working life in Correct. during this pro uh, process. It does, but the transition Absolutely. from if you're used to an organization where everybody shows up physically, making that transition to working from home, laptops, mm -hmm. you know, call, calling in, so on mm -hmm. and so forth. It's not easy, um, but it's what they have to, uh, what they have to adjust to mm -hmm. in order to see out this period. I agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's fantastic. So I'm um, just trying to bring it back home mm. now because um, a lot of African countries are commodity dependent. Nigeria mm -hmm. gets about 60% of our FX revenues from oil. Right. Mm -hmm. and. I think almost 90% of all the FX flows in the market come from crude oil. Mm. And you just mentioned that um, China is the world's largest consumer of crude oil. So it means that with the slowdown in the economy, they've stopped demanding as yeah. much. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're already seeing the impact you know, right. on Brent crude. So how much buffer can our own economy take? Like if this continues, right? And you know, we get reduced FX flows and all of that. Mm. How do you think we can weather that out? Yeah, Nigeria right now, the um, foreign exchange reserves are at 38 billion, uh, about 37. So they've fallen from about 45 billion in, I think, July of last year. July so they've, of last they've fallen. Year. So mm -hmm. right now, you, there's not that much cover to cover so as far as imports yeah. to cover to bring into the country. So it's a, it's a dire situation for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. our, just wow. a little um, correction though, our own strand of, of crude oil crude is oil. Bonnie Light. Yeah. Right, so mm -hmm. sweet but, it doesn't. Yeah, hey, yes. Uh, but, 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 <laughs> but it's so it's crude. Although that one is trading at $50. Okay. So it's still under the benchmark price benchmark of 57 price, Right. So, okay. so you know, it's a revenue shortfall that we're facing because of the importance that we place almost solely on okay. FX. So we all, Nigeria wants this to also um, be Blow resolved over. soon, you know, because, you know, but then in it, oil has its other issues. There's a mm. global supply glut right mm. now. Yeah. 
Um, I think one of you With mentioned OPEC, OPEC earlier, yes. right? <laughs> Russia hasn't agreed to the cuts that uh, OPEC has, you know, talked about. Their meeting is in March next right. week, I think Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, wow. So we'll that see what happens. Pressed. Yeah, we'll yeah. see what happens there as far as oil is concerned. But also very quickly as well, um, trade. If you look at our trade statistics for the third quarter of last year, we are improving, right? So right. third quarter of 2019, we're at 9.1 trillion naira, mm -hmm. up about six percent from the second quarter. Uh, imports actually, so for our trade balance was positive, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Exports increased to 9.1 trillion. Imports, imports import. reduced by 2% okay. to 3 So, mm -hmm. yeah. But 50% of our imports came from, from Asia, right? Wow. Out of that 50%, okay. China is responsible for about 30%, Not right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is, is why we think right. so the small right. businesses are yeah. often yeah. You think about yeah. people exactly. who You think about people who travel to China you know, to trade. Yeah. We had a one swap. I don't know if you remember when we did this mm -hmm. um, a couple years ago, where yeah. the central bank provided one, the mm -hmm. Chinese currency for trade. Like so so it's, it's very, very, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's robust, you know, yeah. as far as our dependence on them. So from oil and trade, the risks are there. Very high. We so just want to make to sure that, yeah, that it can be sorted out soon enough. You know? So would you, would you, is it fair to say that, um, I mean, you said, you know, everybody has to sort of ride the tide and just go through this whole phase. Mm -hmm. But is it fair to also say, or is it too early to predict like a global recession? The, um, the chances of a global recession are real. Okay, so there's a gentleman called Nassim Taleb, right? Okay. He, um, he's a former Wall Street trader. He's a, a NYU professor in mm -hmm. risk engineering. He studies statistics and probabilities of the unknowns. In 2007, he wrote a very popular book called The Black Swan. Okay. And The Black Swan is an unknowable event right. mm -hmm. that has a catastrophic effect impact, uh, impact mm -hmm. right so this has been described as a black swan event mm -hmm. the second black swan after the global Ooh. financial, financial crisis. crisis and the thing about black swan events is that since you don't know it's coming you can't properly prepare for, for the it. outcome so you, so you just yeah so the thing is uh, to answer your question there's a good chance because uh, as you mentioned china was just coming off the back of the you know tough us um, the, trade yes. war mm -hmm. which affected their output now exactly. this is affecting them they are um, PMI numbers, purchase, uh, purchasing manufacturing index, mm -hmm. there was pretty low for February. So okay. manufacturing dipped for them, which are um, scary numbers. Right. So their numbers are not looking good. And they've, you know, economists have already revised their growth downwards mm -hmm. to about 5.4, 5.3%. Yeah, they've been averaging 6.5 for a while. So mm -hmm. it's possible because if you combine that, um, Iran is also facing issues. They, have, they also have high cases of the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. They also are coming off the back of US sanctions with mm -hmm. the Iran nuclear deal. So this is coming at a really bad time, time. For, for countries. The yeah. Middle East is facing its own issues. Uh, Asia has its own issues. Africa has high debt. For this to come at this time when they're on the back of other issues, it yes. could possibly lead to it. But as of right now, yeah. again, the estimates are that they can possibly, poss again, I want to say possibly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to have this thing now escalate. But exactly. it, the estimates mm -hmm. are that they might have it in control by the end of March. But a global recession, it's up there. It's likely. It's likely. It's likely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so it has to stay positive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Let's see, are there any questions you want to ask Brutus? No? Brutus, no? mm -hmm. so, you know, we our target audience is, is the youth, right? Yes. So, um, we like to say that youth globally now, mm -hmm. and what are their concerns with coronavirus? If we're talking economic impact, what would yeah. you like to leave them with? Today? Okay, so look, I I'm, might actually, you know, deviate a tad here, yeah, because um, no. No one with black skin has died from this yet. Nobody, no African has passed away from this. Um, as far as the risks to the, our economy, as far as what we're seeing for the youth, it's still unemployment. That is still the biggest, underemployment plus unemployment for youth is about 40 mm -hmm. something percent. The youth need jobs. Exactly. They need to be productive. Um, poverty is the biggest health scare that Africans face right Absolutely. now. Exactly. Right? Uh, because you're not, you're less, mm -hmm. you're less able to protect yourself when you have mm -hmm. a health scare. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Less able to put a roof over your head. Absolutely. And the number one thing that can take you out of poverty is economic growth. So mm -hmm. for Nigerians, mm -hmm. we are more in danger of, as far as health is concerned, of mm -hmm. GDP growth not meeting up to population growth, right? Mm -hmm. Than the coronavirus, right? So, so for the youth, it, and then that now falls on government to be able to provide enough jobs uh, for them. Sorry, I'm really passionate about the youth That's and okay. employment. Okay. So, I feel you. So yeah, so, so yeah. While the coronavirus does have 
It's concerns that they're, you know, yes. but I mean, with what with the way Lagos State has responded to this, yeah. I think the Ebola virus was a good template and yes. showed we could put this, um, you know, response so quickly enough. Mm -hmm. The Italian man is still the only based. one they've talked about. Nobody's so mentioned far. So, far, so, so far, far, so far, so far, nobody else has mentioned. Some people so, are already quarantined. Right, yeah. exactly, quarantined. Quarantine. So, quarantine. Quarantine. Happy, but it's uh, yeah. unemployment, that's so what they need to focus Thank you very much for it. has been a very insightful conversation. Thank you for having me. Thank you, ladies, for joining us. Absolutely. So, Tunji Andrews joins us right after the break.